with the PPTs. Today I'll teach you reading and listening. And all the others, Neeraj, Jonathan, Amit, and Karthik also can watch this PPT and you can ask me any questions. I'll start off with the reading. You can, and after Zanu and Teresa, we'll go through a right reading answers as well, okay? okay? Okay, now I'm going to share my screen with you and show your PPT. Yeah, okay, thank you. Hooray, Educating Minds, Crafting Futures. So these are the four modules, IELTS, Listening, Reading, Writing, and Speaking. So the, as it goes in order, this PPT is made Listening, Reading, Writing, Speaking in order. So I'll just skip uh, the re listening now. Start off with reading because that's a little longer one, and then we'll do the reading, uh, listening after this. So, in reading, the time duration for the reading test is 60 minutes, and there are three passages given. Each passage will have 13 questions, and one passage will have 14 questions. So, it's totally 40 questions. The instructions you have to read the instructions and word limits before you're starting off. So, read the instructions, uh, read what the task is supposed to be. So the instruction could be uh, complete the sentences or it could be complete the notes, complete the tables, or you could have um, choose from the correct options as are MCQs, uh, what uh, right, true, false not given or yes, no, not given. So please follow the instructions. And also you have to follow the word, word limits. Back to the previous slide where uh, I left off the slide. I just started with the first one. You'll have a first paragraph for general reading where you will have um, two texts, two passages, sometimes smaller boxes of seven or eight advertisements, maybe on hotel or any other advertisements. The paragraph B for general, second passage would be of discursive nature, be more work-related issues. And the, it could be uh, about applying for a job, about company policies, salaries, terms and conditions of the job, all that would be usually in the second passage, section two. And in section three, it would be more of analytical nature. And that would be of a topic of general interest. So in reading general text, you'll find it written as section one, section two, section three. In academic reading, they call it passage one, reading passage two, and reading passage three. But it's the same time limit, 60 minutes for both. And the question types, what I mentioned in the next slide, the question types also are the same. Uh, reading, academic reading, slightly more difficult than the general reading, but just very slight. And the scoring is also a little different. There's one mark for every correct answer. But when you convert the raw score to the band score, you see that 30, uh, if you get 40 out of 40 in reading general and academic, you get nine, nine band. In, in academic, if you get 39 out of 40, also it's a nine band. But in general, if you get 39 out of 40, it's 8.5 because it's not so tough. But it, it's considered uh, academic is tougher. So if you get 39 also, they give you a nine band. So that just goes to show that it's a little tougher. Now let's look at how the passages are. Uh, sequenced in the academic reading passages. So first you have something on literary prose, that is reading passage one. Reading passage two will be on fiction. Reading passage three will be on social sciences and humanities. So this is the general sequence that it comes in. Now the next one is over. These are the question types. There are some tips for reading. So the first one is begin by reading the question and then skim the passage. So read the question first, understand the instructions, the word limits, the uh, what are you supposed to do? What's the task? Then read through the questions and then come to the passage, skim through the passage. Skim means read quickly to understand the context. Then you do the second step, scanning. Scan for specific information. Read the question in detail. Look for specific details. Read the question, underline the keywords in the question. Then come to the passage. Then read the specific details in the passage. Word chunky is another important tip which you can use. So when reading quickly, you see, uh, group the words together. Chunking means grouping. So you group the words while you're reading so that you don't read one word after another words one by one. You just read them in groups so that you absorb and comprehend the meaning faster. Then eliminate rereading of words. So when you're reading fast, when you're doing skipping, uh, skimming, read quickly, quietly without moving your lips and keep moving uh, forward and reading. Don't reread, don't go back and read that sentence again because that will bring down your speed. You have to be very good in your your uh, your, theory, your vocabulary and your synonyms. In the book called Essay Writing and Letter Writing, uh, August 2021, in the Dropbox, you have a book where you have 75 different model answers for various topics and subjects of essays. And you have about 35 letter writing sample answers. And you have tips and techniques for listening, reading, writing, and speaking. 
in this book we have also given you a lot of vocabulary topic wise vocabulary depending on what the topic is that's helpful for your reading listening and writing and speaking we have also given you a list of common synonyms used so about 50 or 60 common synonyms so the word is there and you'll have three or four different words which mean the same like that we have 50 or 60 list of uh, a list of them in the drop box so please start looking at them and learning so that your reading and listening becomes easier tell me regarding reading do you all have any questions any of you who have joined uh, neeraj jonathan kartik and who else um, your name is not shown amit yeah amit uh, yeah one question uh, like yes. uh, if i am giving computer based uh, exam Yes. So, uh, whether evolution, how it will be done? Uh, they will be do manually because you said that somewhere we need to write short, short, uh, short question, I mean, short answer. So, how it will be done? Whether it will be computerized evolution or manually, it will be done. Uh, for computer based test, they would have a software which would have all the answers already programmed, and okay. that would choose pick out your answer and see if it matches, and they would correct it that way. Another thing in the computer based reading test is. that some answers you don't even have to write you just have to drag and drop so it okay. will get automatically saved and then that gets corrected with their software they have softwares for that even the scanning is all scanning is all uh, programmed they just scan the answers there nobody is going to manually correct it for writing there yeah they manually correct your writing because they have to read your sentence structures your vocabulary your idea generation the context whether the task is achieved they have to check all that so writing is manually corrected listening reading is done by the systems and by the scanner for the speaker for the written test and for speaking the examiner who conducts your exam will be evaluating you and giving you the score on mine there also there are four assessment criteria this pronunciation lexical resource which means vocabulary grammatical range and accuracy fluency and coherence these are the four assessment criteria for speaking so they'll give you on 9 1 to 9 on all the four take an average and give you the total score on 9 okay the question all of you can do one thing if you'll have your phones now you can go to youtube and type hurray space ielts comma pt comma oet then you'll get something called overseas education below that can you see it click on that link overseas education and you'll see our hurray logo with four dots on it click on that hurray logo and below that there's a subscribe button in red click on that subscribe have you all done that now after you subscribe you see home videos playlists click on playlists once you click on playlists on the right side you'll get grammar videos of 17 then you'll get oet pt and you'll get ielts reading ielts writing ielts speaking and ielts listening a lot of videos for each of the components in ielts they call them components not modules you'll find lots of our videos our videos have ppts with voice overs of the trainers and it's a teaching video it will teach you it will give you all the tips and techniques and you you can learn from that so it's very useful you are, you have free access to it at any given time you can watch them any number of times yourself but the advantage of coming for training is that you get a personalized guidance for every writing you do the trainer corrects it and gives you feedback they underline the the wrong words the errors the areas of improvement gives you feedback below what to improve and for speaking you are doing a live session with the trainer the trainer is uh, telling you what are the things you, how you are speaking giving you feedback telling you where you can improve in so you have someone to guide you and walk you through hold your hand and take you through this process so yes you have all the materials on the internet you have yeah. lots of youtube uh, videos there are a lot of the different companies which you know offer the study materials but you don't have that personal touch so that's where the difference comes where you need a trainer or you need to you know go for training it always gives you better results you can say that for sure okay can you see the first slide hurray on screen yes great so first is listening so this is how the listening um, structure of the listening test is you have the you have four sections now they call parts from last year 2020 onwards january they changed it and they call it part 1 part 2 part 3 part 4 so there are four parts as you did in your listening you saw that earlier they were called sections now they call parts there are four parts each part has 10 questions part 1 is 1 to 10 part 2 11 to 20 part 3 21 to 30 part 4 31 to 40 and all the whole video uh, sorry the whole audio from 1 to 40 will be played continuously 
However, they will give you breaks in between, a little time to go through the questions, maybe one to five or six to 10. They will tell you the numbers of what you have to go through. You would have uh, had that experience, right? When you did the listening test, you would have under seen that. And you also will have uh, all the whole audio played only once. It will not be repeated, okay? Now, uh, you will get 10 minutes at the end of the 40 questions. You will have 10 minutes time to transfer your answers. So from 1 to 40, the audio will continuously play. That is 30 minutes. It takes half an hour. You don't have to play, play, press pause button or rewind or fast forward. Just play it once. After the 40 questions are over, you will be given 10 minutes time to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. You transfer the answers. If you're doing computer-based tests, you don't have to transfer the answers. You type it only once. And you'll have two minutes at the end to check all your answers. If you're doing paper-based test, at the end of each section, you will have half a minute to go through your work and make any additions or corrections. So that ha half a minute for under four sections comes to two minutes. So in the computer-based test, you will get two minutes continuously at the end to check all your answers. They will not give time at the end of each section. So that's another difference. Now the next point here is recording is played only once. Each section has 10 questions. 30 minutes is uh, 30, minute, 30 seconds given to go through the questions. So you get half a minute to go through the questions. When you get time, please read the questions quickly. You have to scan, uh, skim, uh, read quickly and see, uh, predict the answers. If it's fill in the blank, see what comes before and after the blank. See that the grammatical structure is correct when you fill in a word. See that the singular plurals or the subject verb agreement agrees when you write an answer or the tenses should be the same. If the entire sentence is present tense, the answer would also be in present tense. If the sentence is past, you have to write an ED word ending with ED. Or if it's future tense, you will have will or shall and the main verb. Here are the question types on the right side. You have multiple choice questions. Uh, these are called MCQs right, generally. And you will have a question and you'll have three or four options. Here, a lot of inference skills are required. Gap filling is just fill in the blanks of a sentence or a summary. The questions have to be answered as per the direction. So you listen to the, read the task, what you're supposed to do, how many words you're supposed to write and write the words as per what they're given or for MCQs, infer the meaning and choose the correct option. Okay, let's look at the four parts here. Uh, IELTS listening, there are four parts. The difficulty of conversation increases in an ascending order. So part one is one to 10. And this is a conversation or discussion between two people in a social situation. That is one to 10. It's always social situation, but the topics differ. But the, the topic is, I mean, the subject is the same, but the details will differ. Part two is always a monologue. What is a monologue? What's the meaning of monologue? Dialogue, monologue. Single person. Very good. Single person talking. Dialogue is two people talking. Monologue is mono is one. Monochrome is single color. One. Mono is one. Monologue is single person talking. So part two is one person talking in a social situation on any social topic. Part three is again a discussion between a between either two, three or four, up to four people maximum in an educational or training context. And part four is an academic monologue. Again, one person talking on an academic subject. It could be a lecturer giving a lecture in the class. It could be a student counselor talking to a group of students, telling them about the upcoming courses, about the universities. So that's uh, part four, one person. Good question. Now let's look at the strategies for listening. Orient yourself towards uh, on the text. So understand who the speakers are, where they are located, why are they speaking, what is the purpose. Look for specific information. For example, details like the name of a person, the gender, the nationality, the age, the address, phone number, like you said, or it could be building number. It could be the road's name. What's that word? Now move on to the next one, eighth, ninth, ten. Then at the end of the tenth question, after every part, they'll give you half a minute. Go back and check. Go and try to remember what you heard. If you can't remember, take a guess. There's no harm in guessing because there's no negative marking. There's no minus one. It's zero or one. If you guess correctly, you'll get one. But if you don't even answer it, it's zero. Either way, it'll be zero. There's no minus marking, right? So just take a guess. And um, you can look out. Keep moving along, identify what the speakers are talking about, listen for the house numbers, the size of an object or color of an object, shape of an object. These are all the details you have to look out for. And separate main ideas from supporting ideas. Understand the content. What's the main idea of the talk? So when you have to choose some answer, especially MCQs and all that, you have to pick out the main ideas because the details won't really matter. The examples they give, answers won't be from that. 
The answer will be on the main theme, the context. And I told you about this fifth point, follow signpost words for upcoming information, like directional words, directional terms, or uh, prepositional phrases, like um, in the middle of, by the side of, across the room, opposite that. So I'll show you in the next slide some samples of, yeah, follow the descriptions. The description could be map labeling, diagram labeling, or graphs. The signpost words like left, right, in the center, to the north, south, east, west, shapes, sizes, colors of objects, example, etc. help you in identifying the objects when you try to pinpoint. When they say across the room or across the street, there is a park. On the right side of it, there is a school. And behind the school, there is something that will be the dash. You have to find out what it is and write. As you're listening, what are they saying behind the school? Put that in the blank. Thank you to both of you for staying up so late, 10.45. That were really thank you. Then. Yeah, thank you to you. Thank you. It was my pleasure uh, imparting some knowledge to you. And I wish you both all the best for your training. Always tell yourself to that you're going to score four nine bands, listening nine, reading nine, writing nine, speaking nine in the exam and work towards it. Come regularly for classes, take feedback from the trainers, get involved, ask questions, clarify your doubts. And uh, if you do all that, it is possible. Reading and listening, you can score nine. There are a lot of people, a lot of students in class also, they get nine. They get, okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Anu. Thank Thanks, Anu. Much. Thanks, Teresa. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night. Happy New Year to both of you. May this year be the year that you're going to go abroad and fulfill your dreams, reach your dream destinations. Thank okay. you. Thank you for the wishes. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.